So what or where, you might ask, is this so-called fifth province? Everyone knows there are only four provinces in Ireland. Yet throughout the writing of Irish poets, you will find references to a fifth province very much in existence. And of course, its existence is in the stories. Stories which can light up the imagination and take us on a journey. Join us on the journey. The poets of Ireland have always told us the most wonderful stories. Oliver Goldsmith, for instance, shares memories of his father. His house was known to all the vagrant train. He chid their wanderings, but relieved their pain. The long-remembered beggar was his guest, whose beard, descending, swept his aged breast. The ruined spendthrift, now no longer proud, claimed kindred there and had his claim allowed. The broken soldier, kindly bade to stay, sat by his fire and talked the night away, wept o'er his wounds, or, tales of sorrow done, shouldered his crutch and showed how fields were won. How better than in a story to celebrate our friendships? Percy French recalls, in a small hotel in London, I was sitting down to dine when the waiter brought the register and asked me if I'd sign. And as I signed, I saw a name that set my heart to stir. A certain Francis Farrelly had signed the register. I knew a lot of Farrelly's, and out of all that crew, I kept on sort of wondering which Farrelly were you. And when I finished dinner, I sat back in my chair, going round my native land to find which Farrelly you were. Affairs of the heart giving rise to stories of great passion. What could they know who named you of jug and bed and table? Hours slipping through our fingers, time vanished from the room. Or what of all the secrets we knew among the rushes under the reek when cuckoos brightened against the moon? You are my first and last song, the harp that lilts my fingers, your lips like frozen honey, eyes like the mountain pool, Shaped like the reek your breast is, whiter than milk from Nefin. And he who never saw you has lived and died a fool. Time now for a story that leaves us right at the threshold of the fifth province. Yates, of course. I went out to the hazel wood because a fire was in my head and cut and peeled a hazel wand and hooked a berry to a thread. And when white moths were on the wing and moth-like stars were flickering out, I cast the berry on a stream and caught a little silver trout. When I had laid it on the floor, I went to blow the fire aflame, but something rustled on the floor and someone called me by my name. It had become a glimmering girl with apple blossom in her hair who called me by my name and ran and faded through the brightening air. Though I am old with wandering through hollow lands and hilly lands, I will find out where she is gone and kiss her lips and take her hand and walk among long dappled grass and pluck till time and times are done the silver apples of the moon, the golden apples of the sun. 